Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call of Gofik by Sciences Limited. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode, and anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. To remove yourself, you may press star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star. And zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Over to Ms. Amisha, the company secretary. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Manisha. A uh, very good evening to all ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to Bufik Bio Sciences Limited earning conference call for the fourth quarter and financial year 2023-24. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Pranav Chokri, Chief Executive Officer and Whole Time Director, Mr. Devki Nandan Rumta, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Avik Das from Investor Relations Team to give the highlights of the business and financial performance of the company and to take questions if any. Before we begin, I would like to say that some of the statements that will be made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature. It is subject to unfortunate risks and uncertainties, and the actual result could materially differ. The company undertakes no obligations to update or revise any forward-looking statement, whether as a result of new information or future events or otherwise. We will now begin the call with the opening remarks from Mr. Avik, followed by a financial overview from Mr. Runda. Thereafter, we will have the forum open for the interactive Q&A sessions. The participants are requested to ask two questions in the initial round. I will now request Avik for the opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Ami, and good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this investor call to discuss our Q4 performance. I'm pleased to provide an update on the significant developments and achievements that are taking place this quarter at Bufet Bioscience, and I will begin with uh, the indoor capex update. Uh, we have made substantial progress with our manufacturing facility in indoor. Our media cell validation studies are underway, ensuring the robustness of our aseptic process. This validation is crucial for minimizing product batch rejections and streamlining the approval processes. Uh, we are confident that this will lead to a faster regulatory approval and certification and also enhance our uh, production quality as well as reliability. Uh, moreover, a pre audit by a distinguished Ex international inspector has further uh, uh, helped us prepare for the upcoming regulatory inspections. Uh, their expertise and practical recommendations have helped us improve our compliances and operational processes, uh, setting the stage for hopefully a smoother uh, future inspections and uh, fewer regulatory hurdles once we commence the uh, regulatory audits. Uh, on the product uh, development front at Indoor, uh, so our team has been actively working on over 40 niche products. Uh, we are developing a wide array of products, uh, expanding our portfolio from antibacterials and antifungals to molecules used in the treatment of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder to HIV treatment and innovative products for neuropathic uh, pain management. Uh, I'll quickly give an update of the various uh, business divisions that we have now, uh, starting with critical care division. So our critical care division has sustained growth uh, to enhance market penetration and leadership in niche antibacterial and antifungal products. Uh, we have successfully penetrated over 2,000 hospitals now uh, with brands like Nuficap, Micafung, uh, Micafung, Polyfic, Ticofic, and Neurofic becoming preferred choices among medical professionals as per the, uh, the market data that's available to us. Uh, we are also proud to introduce Sankal. This is Gupik's first patient assistance program. This initiative supports economically strained patients requiring long-term therapy, providing free therapy uh, that will be delivered to their doorstep. Uh, with 50 doctors and 500 patients expected to participate, the uncle will uh, definitely enhance patient engagement and build trust among healthcare providers. Uh, we've also done some uh, uh, differentiated product launches in this division. So we've launched the Neurofit dual chamber bag. Uh, this is an innovative closed drug delivery system uh, that ensures zero human intervention 
setting a very new standard in medication safety and efficacy. Uh, this innovation strengthens the uh, market position in critical care drugs, uh, drugs and we uh, intend to add more and more molecules to this uh, drug delivery system, uh, which is very proprietary to do it uh, at the moment in the market. Uh, another notable launch was uh, Dalbavan, uh, which is a second generation lipo glycopeptide antibiotic, uh, which is used for serious bacterial infections. Uh, this is also a once a week uh, uh, dosing frequency, which will help reduce the treatment burden on patients and the healthcare providers. Uh, we have a range of unique products in our pipeline uh, planned in this division, which includes a next generation tetracycline, uh, a next generation carbapenem, uh, a, a very, uh, I mean, a next generation echinocandin, as well as uh, an azole. Uh, now, coming to our particular division, uh, our assisted reproductive drug portfolio has been strengthened uh, with the planned launch of differentiated products such as the ultra high purified HMG, the recombinant FSH. Uh, these products offer superior efficacy and safety, addressing the complex fertility challenges and demonstrating significant growth potential in the domestic market. We've also introduced uh, Glutisium Alpha, which is effective in recurrent implantation failure. Now, uh, coming to Sparsh, uh, the Sparsh division continues to excel with its direct to hospital distribution model. Uh, we have established business channels with over 1,400 hospitals. Uh, and in this division, we have complete visibility on the tertiary sales. And we've also noticed a very high retention rate of customers. And this transparency and efficiency have positioned us well to launch uh, more value-added products and expand our offerings. Uh, and we mentioned in our presentation the kind of therapeutic segments that we have in to sparse in the coming quarters. Uh, now, quick update on the Aspiderm division. Our Aspiderm division is growing through knowledge sharing and unique training programs uh, like the GROW program, which democratizes the use of botulinum toxin and expands our market reach. Uh, we've also achieved milestones such as hosting Space Off, India's first hands-on cadaver and injectable workshop and publishing comparative studies on botulinum toxin type A with other leading brands uh, of botulinum toxin in the market. Uh, a quick update on the Neurocare division. Uh, a Neurocare division has successfully launched uh, Zarbot, uh, the first Indian botulinum toxin of international pedigree. Zarbot has quickly gained the confidence of leading neurologists with acceptance uh, and prescriptions by over 100 leading neurologists in India within a year of launch. And we are continuously conducting scientific activities, workshops, and injector programs to expand Darbot's uh, user base and reinforce its position as a suitable alternative uh, uh, for neurologists. Uh, now I'll give you all a quick update on <coughs> uh, the, our uh, uh, mass market division which includes Spark, Stellar, and the healthcare division. Uh, here we've conducted various uh, uh, knowledge sharing programs. We've also conducted diagnostic camps across India. Uh, uh, for our stretch mill product, which is a very unique product uh, for uh, stretch marks, we've come up with a proprietary device which helps us uh, measure the, uh, the, the stretch mark uh, uh, and which can, which can help us to be proactive in ensuring the right treatment because as we know, stretch marks are irreversible. We also filed a patent for this particular uh, uh, device. Uh, we have some very interesting products uh, uh, which are set for launch in, in these divisions. We mentioned them in our uh, uh, presentations. One of the notable ones are the uh, extended release uh, diverge restaurant. Uh, which is a very exciting uh, market. Uh, uh, now, a quick update on the international business. Our international business strategy uh, has yielded new product approvals and registrations across a diverse range of countries that include the uh, UK, Australia, South Africa, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Philippines, Thailand, as well as Myanmar, uh, with over 200 products now registered across regulated and 
semi-regulated markets and another 150 odd products in the pipeline. We are well positioned to leverage our existing formulations and target new market opportunities. Uh, we also have a very exciting announcement about a unique pain management solution which we have licensed uh, in, in the past quarter. This is a synthetic analgesic with a mechanism of action that is similar to an opioid but without the associated side effects. This product acts as both an agonist as well as an antagonist at opioid receptor uh, that provides effective pain relief while reducing the risk of respiratory depression, which is the most common side effect of opioid pain management options. Uh, this is also a once-a-week pain management product, uh, which would mean it has a lower abuse potential and is particularly suitable for managing moderate to severe pain, uh, including post-operative pain. Uh, there is a patent for this product, and the patent period for this product in year is 2031. Uh, in conclusion, Q4 has been a quarter of growth and strategic advancement for Gukas, as uh, dedicated efforts in product development, market penetration, regulatory compliance, and patient engagement are driving our way ahead. We remain very committed to delivering innovative and high quality healthcare solutions while enhancing value for our stakeholders. Uh, thank you all for your continued support and confidence in Bupik Biosciences. I look forward to addressing uh, questions later in the Q&A. And uh, this concludes my update. And I'll now hand over the call uh, to Mr. Junta for the financial highlights and update. Thank you, Avik. I will just going to highlight the financial result for the Q4 of financial year 24 versus the Q4 of financial year 23. I will also going to highlight the financial results of 24 versus the financial results of 23. The total revenue for Q4 of this financial year is 194.9 crores compared to 173 crores of Q4 for financial year 23. The EBITDA for the current Q4 is 34.6 crores compared to the Q4 of last year, 32.8 crores. The EBITDA margin for current Q4 is 17.8%, whereas the Q4 for financial year 23, it was 18.9%. The profit before tax for the Q4 for this financial year is 26.6 crores, compared to Q4 of financial year 23, was 23.9 crores. The tax margin for the current Q4 of the current financial year is 13.6%, Q4 of last financial year was 13.8%. The profit before tax for the current financial year is 19.5 crores. The Q4 of financial year 23, it was 18.1 crores. The tax margin for the Q4 is 10%. The Q4 of last financial year tax margin was 10.5%. Now I highlight the financial result for financial year 24 versus 23. The total revenue from the operation is 806.70 crores compared to 690.6 crores during the financial year 23. The EBITDA margin for the financial year 24 is 148.05 crores compared to 137.2 crores of last financial year. The EBITDA margin for current financial year, that is 24, is 18.4% compared to financial year 23, it was 19.9%. The profit before tax for the current financial year 24 is 115.7 crore, whereas the financial year 23, it was 106.7 crore. The tax margin for the current financial year 24 is 14.3%. The financial year 23, it was 15.5%. The profit after tax for current financial year 24 is 18.86.1 crores, compared to financial year 23, it was 79.7 crores. The tax margin for the current financial year 24 is 10.7 crores. Where the financial year 23, it was 18.5%. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we can now start a QA session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star in 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
the first question is from the line of Nitya Shah from Kamakya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I wanted to understand whether the Biosecure Act, which has been passed in the US recently, what impact uh, do you think that would create for music? Is there any big advantage you're seeing out of that? Yeah, hi. I'm sorry, actually, there was a little bit of a disturbance. Can you repeat that question again, please? Yeah, I was saying that the Biosecure Act that has been passed in yeah. the US, how do you see the impact coming on Indian players such as yourself? Do you see this as a good benefit going ahead? So very frankly, it's very preliminary and very early to comment on that because in the past also they had come up with some other act uh, in terms of the generic market uh, which uh, eventually then got changed once the election changed. So I'm assuming since the act has been made, uh, there will be uh, what do you call uh, uh, proper execution. For us, uh, keeping in mind the India market, specifically keeping in mind some specific products, uh, is that... Uh, if we are able to do a good regulatory profiling of our factory and there are certain technologies where, uh, and there are certain, I would say, USPs by which uh, as a US FDA partner and having Prime Bio also a part of that, uh, there can be some advantages. But again, I would like to say, you know, because it's very preliminary on to comment on that. And right now, I'm still not the expert because uh, what my team told me, let's wait. That's what I would try to give you, the same feedback. And uh, after going through your presentation, is it a fair assumption to uh, say that in quarter two we will start seeing the commercialization of the indoor capex? So that was a good observation what came out. If you see, last year we are trying to go for more and more hospital penetration and direct supply rather than primary supply to stockist. And now, uh, because of the different experts whom we have called uh, in indoor, to get the audit done and the feedback done, I think there's a delay of one, one and a half, two months happening in terms of the actual commercial production starting. We visited DCAT also in the month of March and there were some uh, clients whom we already are engaging for the US markets and it, you know, on much. I think the, the discussions have really taken a good turn and their QA team has come and they also have given their inputs which can be you know, changed right now. So implementing those changes, seeking the confidence and as Avik said, we also had an ex-US FDA uh, inspector who has retired and you know she does consultancy she also had come and give her a good insight about certain processes which are being ex uh, implemented and executed right now as the media film and something we did before the media film and right now something will be done side by side in utilities also so i hope uh, the line three line four which will be starting the revenue should be captured from uh, approximately june end and that will be for the last week or maybe by july first week and uh, yes, as you said, uh, the liopolization full-fledged uh, revenue should be start capturing from July and August first week. So you can say maybe two months full of uh, uh, Q2 will be somewhere where you will see the revenue going up. Because we have a big order book and we are right now struggling with execution. So I hope, I mean, I'm not sure now, I'm sure now, or not hope anymore. We are sure that from July onwards, we can see the revenues being captured in the in our uh, top of the numbers. Yeah. And now that you've crossed 800 crores of top line in FY24, are you uh, confident on you know reaching close to a thousand crore revenue mark by FY25? Uh, I'm confident for sure, and I'm sure we'll be doing especially what indoor comes in, other things coming in the order book, what is it looking for. But more or less, I would like to make a point where it's very clear. You know, uh, gradually, year by year, we are right now de-risking ourselves from contract manufacturing, getting into more front-end where the profitability is. And even now, even with sparse and critical care, even in infertility, we are trying to, you know, get more and more involved in direct supply to the doctors, to the patients, uh, where we can maneuver the pricing, also maneuver the, what you call, uh, the quantity. So keeping in this in mind, uh, primary is not something fo I'm focused on, but yes, I think 952,000 is something if I look even with all these parameters and we hope we can cross that also. So okay. the more we get into tertiary and secondary billing rather than primary billing, the numbers might take a hit, uh, but not that much also, but at least we'll get more, uh, you know, we can control our business much more where we have our control of which hospital, which nursing home and, and all of them are buying it rather than depending on certain distributors. So. Yes, I see. And the uh, last thousand. question from my end uh, was uh, regarding, you know, I've noticed the working capital structure has been a little more stretched. You had explained due to, you know, onboarding more hospitals and penetration into the hospitals. So in this year, are you seeing the working capital to ease out a little bit, like better payable terms from the hospitals and so forth? Yeah, so that was, uh, I think, a very good question. So in the first year, to get the conference, get the penetration done, you know, and also to 
or you know you know some they get all the hospital care this talkies and these people are giving us so much benefit can goofy people say so in the initial run we have definitely stretched it not only in terms of hospital nursing homes but even with certain infertility centers also where we know what are the cycle going on but we feel uh, going forward by september at least uh, around 40 45% 50% of the uh, uh, amount will be back in circulation because we have some other parameters of discounting which we have started now and i think by the end of the year we feel that the data should come back to the normal level so that is the one big thing uh, which we also realize because you know we thought that going and reaching the end customer is good but sometimes we expect that you know getting the money in they expect more discount so we are taking care of them from now on god is so wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of aditya from msa capital partner please go ahead hello am i audible yes sir yeah. please go ahead hi hi pranav sir hi abhik thank you for the opportunity uh quickly wanted to understand what would be the revenue spread across our sba that is domestic branded business international business uh pdmo and api and how is that grown over the last year so uh, very frankly because of the demand of parish and domestic uh, that 55% of our domestic revenue is gone to 58% uh, then of course api i mean uh, then the next biggest thing would of course be exports which has gone uh, i would say no the next biggest thing would be contract manufacturing which has fallen from uh, uh, 25 to around uh, 21 or 22% uh we have seen uh, or actually no less it's actually 19% if i consider q4 also and then uh, the api of i mean the, the export business is increased now problem with export business is because of the capacity con- capacity constraints there are some uk tenders which we have just won in germany if we hope to fulfill in q2 this year instead of q1 this year that will of course give that uh, percentage change and then of course api business is around 4 to 5% so export would be around 20 the next thing would be i mean export would be around or anything between 18 to 20 contract manufacturing would go from 19 uh, what is there last year would fall down to 17 or 15 this year uh, and then uh, domestic business would be anything around 58 plus, uh, plus, uh, plus or minus with the spice division also getting further like by the indoor plant api like i said between 3 to 5% uh, because the base of the other division will increase much more than the api so we'll see api fall from 5 to 3 or maybe 6 to 4 something like that and 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 uh, so gross margin has has improved quite well uh, on an annual basis uh, is this is it sustainable or there was some one time uh, material benefit that we got so that's the problem i'll tell you you know so these gross margins are in spite of our validation batches happening at indoor and now sorry so that's the reason if you remember last three quarters i've been telling you i'm trying to go off the primary billing and going more to directly to hospitals to nursing homes and to doctors Well, which is having an impact on the debtors, but at the same time the margins are definitely improving. But I'm getting much more transparency of business. For so someone who was buying 100 units and then discounting themselves as a primary thing, I can ensure now I know every each and every way where my 100 units are being sold at a better price. So this is one thing which has helped us for gross margin in spite of the prices. Also, if you see the prices from China have eased off only in the last three months. Otherwise, the prices last year were quite high and they went up. In spite of that, in spite of the validation batches, which are also part of the consumption. the gross margin we able to maintain is because of this direct penetration we are trying to increase so now that's why i answered the first question also now is it worth keeping this rising benefit as uh, against uh, the debtors level so that is why we are come up with a new solution also from march onwards where we are trying to give some more discounting which is still less uh, we still our margins will be kept here but we'll give some discounts to the hospital and incentivize them to a pay us a little bit more ahead so that will ease out hopefully by september and next march and the and so uh, the previous participant also asked so uh, 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 the data is green and you highlighted also why but if i would just to get a color across the sbus uh, other than spirish which would have which would it would it would be the division that impacted the increase the most so uh, critical care because there also we are directly now supplying to hospitals and keeping that mark data where we really come to know what hospital is buying how much and at what pricing so the stocking patterns have reduced So the primary has gone now because uh, distributors have stopped stocking it. So whatever orders from the hospital, that only is uh, taken care of since last September. So uh, last February we started Sparsh, that is 2023. From September we started uh, Critical Care, where uh, all the inventory they keep is based on uh, the hospital actual supply. And third division, that is in fertility, we have started only three products, that is Pure Graph, then Gufisin Alpha, and of course Gravipirin. 
So these are the three products which are part of infertility, which com- consume around 25 to 30 percent of our revenue of infertility. These are all uh, only tertiary business which happen, and all this is an additional to the Stanox business. The Stanox and Zarvot since launch of the divisions have been directly doctor supply. So there is no primary billing which happens. So all these five, I would say, different product line of Sparsh Critical Care, uh, then uh, infertility 25 percent revenue, uh, full revenue of Stanox and full revenue of Zarvot. All of them are directly tertiary business only that we penetrate on. Where directly we give it to the hospital, the nursing home, or the what do you call uh, the doctors, and we ensure that that penetration. And we have real time data of who is buying how much and on a monthly basis. And this is the total which is affected. So even in even in critical care, we have superseded the the super stockists, the the entire supply chain. So we are not dealing with super stockists anymore. But right. we still have stockists, but stockists have a marked data. So the stock is still a very important point because without stock is we cannot work because they have a good penetration and collection and you know right. because as a company we can't outsource or enter or Nova Care to go and collect from a small class B class B towns, but now right. the stock is of your stock is working at an X margin that is eight uh, to ten percent. So any order is validated by the team and that is only supplied for by which we get real time data that which hospital which nursing was buying for. So it's not that you know we have to you know do the primary billing they have to supply to other people also and make little bit more margins wherever possible. So that is little bit difficult now overall. So just last couple of questions. So yeah. uh, we have we have got uh, an in licensing approval from a from a innovator who uh, manufactures pain management molecule. So if you yeah, can oh just yeah. the one pain management product, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if you can highlight that a bit. How large is the market? Who is the innovator? If that is possible. Yeah. It's a company based in Taiwan, and they have already got approval in uh, Southeast Asian markets like Taiwan, Singapore. Malaysia, I think, and two more countries. I think Japan. They are in trials. In US, they are looking for a partner for uh, phase three. In India, we have taken the exclusive rights for India, where uh, we have uh, also it's, it's 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 actually a two part of our relationship. Firstly, that they gave us the exclusive marketing rights for this pain management. So, what is in pain management? If any ICU based position or any doctor, I mean, any orthopedic, any ortho, I would say pain relief or even gynec relief, wherever the acute pain is there, when you want immediate pain relief, uh, where you either have to take a I would say you know like a morphine or something, or if you have to take a diclofenac or anything of that matter, depending on the na- nature of the pain, of course. Uh, uh, these products can work well in conjunction and also maybe some, sometimes in some cases in isolation also. You don't need to pop in pills every day. You don't need to take injections IV every day. You take an injection on the first day, then you need to take the injection on the fifth day or the seventh day, depending on the seriousness of the pain. So the entire compliance of the patient and the doctor just goes. So you go to an ortho, he will have severe pain. He just gives you an injection on day one, and then for day five you are still okay. So you'll be also happy that you know certain people who take uh, NSAIDs or NSAIDs, NSAIDs, who have you know acidity issue, or some people have kidney issues, or some people where the first part metabolism issue, or some people have other side effects. This is completely avoided. So this is a good product which we are quite gungo on. And uh, uh, like I said, tomorrow if we reach a particular milestone of sales in India, then we get a localization option also where we can be a contract manufacturer for them for other countries also along with India. So it's a good uh, relationship. It, it's almost one year we worked on the deal. Finally, it got signed, and I think it's a good uh, addition to our ortho range as well as ICU setup range also. And even in gynec range, when cesareans and other sort of pain or even hysterectomy or others are involved, so it fits our front end very well. Oh, congratulations! And how and how large uh, would this market be? Uh, so pain management is a large large market, but right. inside pain management. What yeah, so can, for the day-to-day pain uh, which is there, which can be managed by a oral, of course, we will not get into that because we want to price it also differently. So that is where our discussion is happening with the innovator and that, how do we price it. So based on the pricing, which clarity should come because, you know, first we are doing a clinical trial here in India also. I mean, we have asked for a waiver, but if they ask us to do a clinical trial, we'll do a clinical trial to in the Indian subset also. If that happens, we'll come to know also like on the Indian patient pool, how is the uh, product happening. Given that we have some pricing options, so if we decide pricing A, then the market addressable is so and so. If we decide pricing B, then the market addressable is, is something else. So I think let's wait for a quarter or two, and then we'll give you a little bit more insight. But anyway, we're looking at launching this product way around in 2025, Q1 or Q2. So that is where the timeline is. Assuming that we have to do a phase three. If we don't have to do a phase three, then we're looking at Q3, Q4 this year. Let's hope for the rest. And this is this is this will be manufactured from our indoor plant. No, no. This is right now will be manufactured in Taiwan and will be imported here. The moment we reach a particular milestone in sales in India, then it will be manufactured by the indoor factory here down the line. And so, uh, for for a, for a indoor plant, uh, what what would be the timelines where 
we would trigger. So we would not directly go for USFD, right? We would go for an Anvisa or UTG uh, and yeah. we'll be targeting it parallelly. So we are looking at uh, three to five molecules which are immediately starting in every line, line one, line two, line three, line four. There are total four lines. Hmm. So after that 40, 45 products which Abhik spoke about, there'll be around four to five products which will be uh, which have been planned on every line. Uh, we'll be triggering the inspection from the first two products only on all these lines. So we have uh, Europe, uh, US, uh, then of course Brazil, and uh, I think even Russia and others also planned. But because most of the products which we are there in the first five launches in every line are something products which eventually we want to take in all these countries. So how you have Navsari, which is approved by all, uh, I would say, countries except US and Japan. Now, Indoor opens up the market also for US and Japan. So uh, we will be filing uh, as and when uh, with all these clients right now. In Japan, we don't have a client yet. And as well as, I think, in uh, some uh, one, two other countries, we don't have a client yet. So other countries, we can take it up as terms of trigger. So, so when are we trying to trigger... So the yeah. batches will be taken by July, like I said, and August. And then on three months stability, that is around October, November, we'll file for the, what do you call, uh, the, we can give the dose here. But moment the uh, WHOGM comes and also we have, so we are looking at 2025 where most of the audits will be triggered subject to the availability of the auditor. So anything mm -hmm. between Q1 to Q4, uh, 2025, you will have a series of audits happening in India and in Indore. Understood, understood. And then we will we will start existing the products uh, yeah. in those markets where we receive the health certifications. Yeah. Perfect. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star N1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Bhavya Sonawala from Samasa Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just had two questions. First, um, on, on on what you spoke about in terms of uh, going from dealers to directly uh, kind of uh, handling hospitals. I just wanted to know how useful the data you spoke about. We do get a lot of data, right? I wanted to know how useful this data is. And in the short term, will we face some challenges because it's a, a pretty big shift uh, of the channel flow? Uh, not uh, we are facing sometimes you know considerable challenges because uh, you know you're going against the tide you know where you have uh, people with other interests coming in and you know uh, I would say uh, trying to disrupt that especially I would say the uh, other channel partners uh, but yes more than the data it's the transparency of business and the margin expansion is what we are looking for so today also it's, I mean I, more and more you know uh, competition is coming in critical care where the price erosion is happening. And that way, actually that price, whatever you try to give as a company, doesn't always reach the right hospitals. And we got a teaser and some uh, good success in Spulch, and that's made us confident to do it immediately by September in critical care and along with that in infertility also. So definitely the data is useful in terms of whether my, you know, so we have these different pin code wise mapping done. PIN code wise mapping also gives us an indication of what particular molecule is happening in PIN code wise and what are the hospital things. So sometimes I'll give you a small example. A primary care uh, hospital is there, a secondary hospital is there, and a tertiary. A tertiary is something like an Apollo or a, what do you call Max and Medanta. A primary care has the potential of buying a advanced antibiotic, whereas we think that no, it is only a present as a vacuum or a meropenem will be suffice there. But now we have seen when we go and actually meet there. I mean, first we realized with this data that even after six, seven years in critical care, we have only penetrated 800 hospitals. So that was one eye opener once we got with the data. Karke. And now just in that September onwards to uh, what you call, uh, let's say April 2024, that critical care division itself has gone from 800 to 1200 plus hospitals. So that is something which is good. First, in anyway has its own journey going on side by side. Even in infertility, we always feel that, you know, there are only, you know, who is actually giving you business? There are only maybe three to four infertility centers per MR, which gives us a business. And when we know the potential in that particular town or city or wherever he is being represented is around 25, 30, 40, 50, depending on the population and the sheer market size. So today, if three people are able to give us a PCPM of five to six lakh rupees per month, why don't we actually, you know, go and penetrate and maybe go for a, a, other, uh, what do you call it? open up the other IVF center also, which can be a target for the future. So such data is very invaluable, of course. There's all this pros and cons. 
you face challenges you know sometimes the stock is just buys and keeps it ready for two months he pays you in 30 days 35 45 days and it's okay sometimes when you directly deal you know you have to face for the stock is faces but i think the gains are much more than the cons so i feel a uh, little bit with discounting if we can take care of the cons of the debtors then i think this this is uh, we are on the right track and we should take it forward okay that actually makes sense uh, but in terms of uh, uh, the kind of penetration we have right now um will be what i'm trying to understand is will we see kind of a slow down because obviously this uh, would take a lot of transition from actually going to dealers and putting out our own people to act, go and uh, go into the hospital so that's what in let's say a year or two or do you see any kind of slow down no. in terms of this no actually it well, was so again so if my primary let's say from a 690 if i could do 900 with a primary sale i must have done only 808 i always have a 10% it coming in because that is the 10% stocks which a dealer will always help me to do it or keep it or stock it or the dealer will give me that business which is in his control he never exposed that to me that might be 10 to 15% but in terms of our growth and the margin expansion that's a small price to pay when down the line we feel more and more transparency coming in the entire equation with uh, companies like entero nova care coming in they have brought the entire distribution Uh, i would say bandwidth in the country to be much more transparent and much more upfront and you know so gone are the days where you know you have Uh, i would say you you have this cat and mouse game you know when you know no, no one knows where they are selling and you don't ask also don't ask don't tell that is something which is going out so i feel it's in the short term yes we will be paying that price of 10 15% or maybe 10% i would say not even 15 but long term it will help us out with this database for sure okay understood uh, the second question uh, we've been doing about 200 crores a quarter now uh so uh, is it fair to assume that uh, this is the kind of peak uh, revenue from the navsari facility until indore comes online or is there some scope for this to increase in terms of product mix once indore comes online so so right me said yeah so indore is more i mean navsari is lyophilization and injection capacity is more or less full now we cannot do much with it uh and that is where you are seeing that revenue breaking thing but you know things like a penens and things like botulinum toxin and things like other things of and uh, and uh, herbal products will always give that traction uh, which will be going and growing there okay but you're right if i want in terms of the capacity in terms of injectable which is a substantial chunk of our revenue indore will help us to unlock that indore is almost one and a half times in our sari so that is something where we feel that you know yes definitely once indore starts from july august in the line three line four and line one line two then definitely we'll see more of the orders being postponed so now we have orders since 90 days 120 days for exports which is a little bit getting on you know we are on the you know boner right now hope we are we are pushing indoor to start as soon as possible at least we are able to take care of all these tenders and orders much more and there are some orders we have stopped taking now at least for the next one two months which are you know sudden sporadic orders immediate orders which we could have in cash if indoor was there so that would all start from july on guys Okay, uh, understood. And just um, just a follow up to the first question, uh, you spoke about tertiary and primary care in, in terms of categorization, categorization of the hospitals. Uh, can you is it possible to just give a rough kind of estimate on how we lie in terms of primary care tertiary, where we um, supply uh, the highest? Oh yeah, tertiary still becomes a bigger chunk for us completely. So like a Fortis, uh, Max, Medanta, Apollo will be still where we'll be present always, and that is where our people always go there because that's the catchment area. but sometimes you see in the prima primary markets and the secondary markets there are much better margins but there are the quantity is consumption are much low and there's much more fragmented and that is what we now need to get up on and get introduced much more so uh, we were always i think leading and doing a good job in the tertiary uh, hospitals which had you know good economic of scale but the margins were quite uh, getting eroded year over year and this primary and secondary was something which is a good insight we are getting you so if you ask me right now majorly we might be still 60% in uh, all our business of critical care 60 to 70% would come from tertiary secondary would be another 20 25% 5% only would be right now primary uh, care market understood thank you so much for all the explanation thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Ayush Mittal from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Um, hi, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, one question I have is how much would be the revenue for the whole year from Astrodome uh, division for us, and uh, uh, particularly from Stunux? So the botulinum toxin contributes to around 25 crores. That is both aesthetics as well as neuro. 
uh, and right now uh, exports have not yet started so this is just the current thing okay. and the other products in asterdam would be approximately maybe 5 uh, to 6 crores one okay okay so um, other thing uh, the observation i have on the numbers for a fairly long time is like uh, if you see for last uh, 10 12 quarters uh, the company is stuck in a range of revenues of about 170 180 odd crore and now 200 odd crore so it's last two three quarters but when we see about many of our divisions sub segments we see that we are the market leaders in areas which are fast growing uh, their natural growth is more than 15 percent or 20 percent um, so why doesn't that translate into our numbers uh, overall and, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. No, please go ahead. Please finish the question. Oh, no, no. Yeah. You answer this, maybe I'll have a fun out. Yeah. So there are two, three things. Uh, in critical care or also in in quarterly, there is also API price dependency which we have to stick to. So as I was saying, uh, the price peaked post-COVID. And after COVID, uh, after the peak, it actually went down from the last three to four months. So there are some molecules which start coming, coming, coming down in uh, what do you call... Uh, uh, September, October, November 2023, and some started coming from May, June 2023 also. So that is where, let's say, I'll give you a typical example of an HCG, where the urinary HCG comes from China. China at one time for Mega was selling at almost $300 or 280 to $300. That same, uh, and we, we could sell the injection, if I tell you in terms of the injection, the injection selling price in India was around 220 or 230 rupees for a while, even though MRP was around 490 or something. Now, the actual selling price of 230 has come down to around 140. So, that is because, again, being the API dependency, because the API has come down from 300 to 80 dollars to something. Same thing with Meropenem, which has reached a peak of around 150,000 per kilo. That has fallen down to almost 50,000 rupees. So, one third the uh, API price has happened. So, in certain cases, when you see in infertility as well as in uh, what do you call uh, what do you know, critical care products, and even now, you know, fungins also others. As and when the efficiency and the prices uh, have become uh, more stable or we have gone into backward integration, there is a price erosion which happens either because of the price cycle of the product or because of it. So there's always, and these are the molecules, I just give you an example of two or three molecules. We are the two top three molecules which contribute to around 15, 20, 25 percent of the products. Like that, there are more examples. I just give you an example of top three, uh, top three to four products only. So this has an impact on the top line, even though the volumes are remaining or the volumes are increasing also. So that is one, two impacts which come there. Uh, second impact also, as I said, no more, more or less uh, in terms of top line, we have stopped, you know, primary billing, which was happening before, had a little bit stopped since last year, uh, not last year, last September 2023. So that is where also we always had two months or three months, no, I think not more than two months inventory lying at the, what do you call, uh, stockist level and a month inventory at the CFL level. So that has now almost come down to 45 days because actually it's primary versus secondary. I mean, sorry, the primary is equal to the secondary or the tertiary directly. So there is also some stocking also which we have reduced on, which we have, because we cannot just suddenly start supplying to the doctors and the inventory is lying at the distributors. It will be more of an issue for us in terms of associations and all that. So first we have to liquidate the inventory at the stockist level and then directly go for supplies, which helps us to also, you know, keep everything cool and calm and, you know, keep every, everyone taken care of in terms of uh, statutory compliance. So that is where we feel these are the little bit two, three challenges which have, you know, impacted the top line. But if you see numbers and numbers volumes, they increase at a much higher percentage. But, but, but uh, like when, we are in, uh, when you say that we are in a, on the formulation side, branded side, um, the price change would not be so much. Like even if the API prices have fallen so much, do you have to decrease the price yeah, by yeah. 20, 30 percent in a six month period? Absolutely. All this uh, in the segment what we are, uh, the advantage and the disadvantage is that if the price increase, we get the pricing benefit immediately. If the price reduce, we have to give the discounting immediately. So this is where the uh, entire compliance is all because of the link to the, what do you call, uh, the API pricing. And that is where, you know, we told you that we are backward into you know, certain fungus which is helping us to take it forward. But yes, the, the sensitivity of the pricing, not only for us, but even let's say an example, for the U.S. market or other markets, for inoxaparin or for hiparin or even for that matter, uh, some other uh, oncomolecules molecules are all, uh, you know, API dependent. Okay. And the other thing is like, uh, though we have not seen much growth happen, but uh, on the balance sheet, this has been raised earlier also. Uh, yeah. But I, I still don't um, uh, uh, get a good understanding of this. That's why I'm repeating on it. But the inventory has more than doubled in the last three years. So as the debtors. 
um, uh, while our business hasn't grown that much. Okay, so the first thing is hearing. If so, you what I'm trying to say is that either our margin should have gone up, like given the kind of business we are in, where we uh, have a brand, where we have that dominance in terms right. of uh, uh, penetration leadership. So right. what usually have, we see with other companies is that your margin increase when you have to do such kind of other things. Right. So I'll explain. So when you have to consider the inventory, you have to also consider indoor as a uh, what do you call year of transition for us also. For us, okay. in any injection plant to start any plant, we have to do validation studies, media field studies, other studies. Also, where we you know like we have to take three three batches each of the highest batch size, the lowest batch size as required by the QA thing, and keep the batch size for six months nine months, and then eventually sell that in the market. In in terms of US, we don't have to do in if, if certain products we are planned for US. Then eventually, either you have to wait for the US business to happen, or if before that, if the US business doesn't happen, then that has to be completely, I would say, consumed and uh, goes away. So that's why the consumption is depend on where any validation batches which we have taken, and we have then completely written off without any revenue. So that's where the validation is happening. In certain cases, where is the validation batches, but we can still keep it and hope that once the approval and registration comes, or so WJ GMP or something, then we can sell it in the Indian market or we can sell it in other markets, which is allowed by the European authority or allowed by the Russian authority and so on and so forth. So such things, because we have invested more than 300 crores in the indoor factory and we have four lines, in the entire year, the effort from October 2023 itself, itself when the actual qualification started, most of our stock is being used in terms of keeping the validation batches. So even when you come there, you will see these huge piles up of vials, rubber bungs, and uh, what do you call, um, I mean, whatever, primary, secondary pa packing material, plus along with that, some APS language, which is also used for certain trials and error also. So that year in transition has started from last year. And uh, again, mm -hmm. coming back to your first point, uh, in terms of the thing, so if you see from a 440 revenue, we had gone to the peak revenue of 800, I think 790 or 800 when the COVID time happened, when everything was hand to mouth and the inventory was coming in and out. The moment that happened, then of course the year of, you know, where the, you know, of course, COVID, that we went to a revenue of 690, where we had a lot of returns coming in from uh, the market, which we had to salvage and take it off. And then from a 690, whatever crores, we have gone to 800 crores. Like I said, keeping in mind the transition that we are going away from the primary market to a, what do you call a much more secondary and tertiary market. So if you analyze the last three years and then you see the next three years, which will be coming in, you will see all those things which you are hoping for and asking for mm -hmm. should be visible in the next three years once these become much more consolidated or much more, I would say, uh, absorbed. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, last two questions. One, um, can you tell us what kind of um, uh, utilizations do we aim for within say, six months of our commercial operations or a year? If you can give some perspective to it, uh, one, and uh, Second, also in terms of revenue. And second, we raised funds from Motilal Oswal. We did a press, we raised almost 100 odd crores. Yeah. Uh, what was the objective and how does that help us uh, uh, given that we had good cash flows also? So, why that decision was taken? And uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, actually, can you repeat the second question I understood? Uh, the first question, can you repeat utilization of what? Yeah, the indoor plant. Like uh, so a bit of perspective on what. Uh, yeah, capacity or revenue, what kind of numbers are we expecting once we start the commercial operation? Some timeline and some perspective on that. Okay. So first I'll answer that question. So indoor, hopefully starting by like I say June and for line 3, line 4 and July and for line 1, line 2. Let's take July and August for these two lines. We foresee in the first year, uh, at least till March, uh, gradually 5, 10, 15 percent going to around 20 percent, uh, I would say, capacity utilization uh, in Assuming, of course, one shift, okay? This is I'm assuming one shift. Because in live utilization, the shifts are all three. In line three, line four, which are liquid and wild, we're looking at uh, one shift as of now. Maximum, we can go for two shifts because of the CIP SID. So this is what I see. Revenue-wise, I'll ask Sumta sir to uh, reply. I'll not comment on that. Uh, answering your second question about uh, Motila Oswalji's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Motila Oswal's investment of around 99.99. Uh, the three things were there which were very important. One was, of course, the validation batches which we needed to take, and we had doziers to make, which would help us to penetrate into the foreign market. So we did not actually wait for indoor to come. Certain validation have been taken care of in uh, Nausari itself or in the R&D sort of a setup, and then we thought that we'll just do a tech transfer to indoor to save time. You know, Otherwise, we would have to go for a complete analysis method validation, complete PVs once again, and then take it forward. So those were the, one of the reasons. Second reason also was keeping in mind the penetration coming in 
about uh, the what do you call growing from primary to secondary tertiary. We want, we knew that the margin expansion was more crucial, and we would need some uh, you know working capital required for the penetration sparish critic care and even for academics going forward. And the third thing is that we had a loan of around uh, 40 odd crores of uh, long term, which we paid off completely uh, out of that. So that was uh, how the three utilizations were taken care of. No, no, it was that's how you utilize the cash. But to raise uh, funds from an investor, usually the thought process is uh, why did we need to tap an investor? We could have managed this by uh, internal cash flows also. No, but like I said, now tomorrow is getting the doziers, and so I have right now. You see, Gupit is a very uh, different company. Some companies are either domestic centric or some companies are export centric. Mm. It is very easy for us to just focus on one market and then wait for two, three years to enter the other market. Now, okay. since Indore is coming in, we have invested more than 300 crores in the India Indore facility. Mm. Out of that, also mm. if you see, if you see, I think 300 or 330, I think Rungta sir will be much better. You say mm. how much has been invested there? We have taken only a loan of 160 crores. So the remaining thing, of course, we have done with internal accruals or via you know our own thing. But the issue is that if I don't encash that capability or that facility with uh, those years on time, with the regulation, I mean the the product line on time, the R and D, like there are four products which Navik spoke about, which also requires you know these special uh, dyno mill, it requires this homogenizers, all that. If we don't encash on all that, then I'll be again staying forward. At the same time, coming back to the domestic market. Right now is the time where we need to penetrate into more and more markets where I have to be independent of, uh, you know, the channel partners, they can dictate my business. So today, if I am able to encash on the in indoor capability of capacity by having a front end which is sustainable and which is predictable, that is always makes sense much more. So these two factors of getting domestic and export done at the same time, we thought that it is better that we take this uh, dilution and then we take an investor in because this will help us to reach our objective much faster and the indoor factory will be, I would say, in a much better, healthier position in terms of capacity utilization than, would it, than it would have been otherwise if we went in a straightforward internal cash uh, generation mechanism. That is where we took this decision. Okay. okay. Thank you. Wish you the best. Yes, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavya Sunawala. From Samas Capital, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the follow-up. Uh, just one question. Previously, uh, so the previous participant, you just said that the last three years has been kind of a transition uh, from COVID to kind of getting the indoor facility uh, up and running. And you spoke about how the next three years will actually show uh, uh, the results. So just, again, uh, trying to understand, in the next three years, you've done a lot of innovative and a lot of new things. Uh, in terms of getting uh, Stanox up and running, Sparsh, and doing a lot of interesting things. But in next three years, is it possible to just guide us in terms of some numbers? Do you think we'll be able to uh, reach kind of 1,500, 1,800 crore revenue? Will we be able to double our revenue? Some kind of guidance because we are doing a lot of things and uh, we're also seeing good results of that. So guidance will kind of be more uh, helpful to understand with where the company is going in this direction. So very frankly, uh, if you see whatever has to be done in terms of capex, what has to be done in terms of manpower expansion, what has to be done in terms of divisions, we are more and more sorted. There will be no more capex, or there will be no more new divisions coming in, uh, except like I say, you know, an add-on to an existing division also, which is all part of the main thing. So now all those things have done, and this was a good opportunity because we are quite bullish on the Indian industry, pharmaceutical industry, that we will see the actual boom happening in the next uh, five to seven years, and I don't expect to be, you know, waiting there. So, again, numbers, I will not be able to give you anything. Of course, I'll request Rungtar sir to maybe comment on that if he can do it after I finish my explanation. But uh, like I said, you know, uh, when we were 300, we could reach that 800 number because we had the infrastructure and the manpower in place to actually take care of that. So it's not that we are going to get an opportunity of a COVID back again, but what we learned from that COVID phenomena that there is a huge amount of business upside of penetration which is available there, which we need to just uh, get ready for in terms of infrastructure, divisions, product sites and all that, which we have done in the last three years in terms of investing whatever we earn in all these things. So, yeah, uh, uh, Dumta, sir, you want to take it right now? So, I think revenue-wise, 10, 15, yeah, please go ahead, yeah. Revenue-wise, we already said in lot of investor calls that we are expecting the top line should be go between 15 to 20 percent year over year for at least next three to four years. That is our expectation, but numbers is very difficult for anybody to guess the number. It's depending about a lot, lot of things, approval is pending, and we feel that, yes, there will be a growth between 15 to 20% over the year for the next three to four years. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you, sir, uh, and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Michelle Manchandan from Systematic Share. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, on indoor, if you could share a number as to how much you would have spent this year on the on the media fill validation and other uh, batches you would have produced. It, uh, so basically, to understand what's the normalized number of your normalized profit of your business. So I think Rumta, sir, can you take this question up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is the indoor facilities commission in the month of March. Then there is a lot of validation batch and trial was going on. Approximately, I can take say between eight to 12, 12 crores we have spent on this all this, this trial. And current current quarter also we are going to spend better amount in the trial. And uh, total capex for indoor plant till March. 2024 will be around 290 crores. Another 15-20 crores capex is pending that will going to happen in the month of April and May. So, and other than this, around 30 crore has, amount has been blocked under GST receivable account because of input credit we are not able to utilize for Indo. So, total cash outflow is around 325 crore rupees, or it may going to increase by 15-20 crore. So, total outflow after full ele election of the commission of the Indo plan will be around 340 crore rupees. Got it. Uh, thank you. And just one more. Uh, so basically, we have been introducing uh, very unique and uh, very differentiated products in India. Just wanted to understand, uh, uh, like, whether we are putting in adequate sales effort around these products to scale them up, or uh, there could be kind of uh, there is an option for you to kind of uh, enhance your medical representative, uh, your kind of MR count, and basically make these products larger uh, in a faster time frame? Uh, no, actually, no. I think uh, we are quite okay uh, with the manpower what we have. It's just that we are making, like, let's say we had the Astridum, and then we crowd out around seven people out of that Astridum division of around 40 people, which are like a special task force. Now in 40K, we are launched Goofy and Alpha, Supergraph, and there will be other external release products launch, which I think the, on June, what we are doing from the existing field force, where the productivity and the performance is not coming as to the mark. We are coming up with a new team of 40 max, which is from using the same field for either experts from here and then maybe some good experts from the industry from uh, reputed companies and come up with a 25, 30 field force for that. So increasing the manpower is not the right way, uh, according to me. And uh, we feel that it's more about a PCPM thing. Moment, every uh, division of ours has a particular PCPM we, we need to cater to. And if that PCPM, once that is reached, then we, of course, go for an expansion in that same territory or adjoining territory, which is not represented. So like I mentioned that, uh, like, you know, even though we have a field force, some people are doing 5 lakhs, 6 lakhs, 7 lakhs, but they might be getting that business only from four, three to four infolly centers from that same town. Now, that same person, if he works out much better, he can get a business uh, from around 10, 15 more IVF centers. Might mean the quantum might not be that high. But at least still possible for him to handle 20, 25 IVF centers by which uh, his sale can be going to 15 lakh, 20 lakhs also. So our, our, our focus would be to go at better monitoring of the people, see how many calls do they make, how many is the, uh, you know, so we have since last four, five months also because of this new data coming in. Once we started getting data from Fortigare and for critically and for Spurs, we actually could now find out what is the hospital-wise business, what is happening. And based on that, we can actually tell them, you know, time say, hospital mein kaam kara, dhanda kyun nahi aare. or if you're working in this hospital and you're getting this, or you have got this business of 2-3 lakhs, that means why don't you attach one more hospital which is next door, which our team have identified, which will help you for a better PCPM. So I hope this answers your question well. It's more about penetration and increasing the PCPM rather than increasing the people. That's what I feel we're going forward is with this data. Got, got it. So just a follow-up, like, would you have a sense as, as to how much your competitor in case of like Stanox, uh, your competitor would be, what kind of a sales force would they be using to push their product? What would be the, what would be their size of sales force? Would it be yeah, a similar size? We do have. How much larger? Uh, we do have. It's not much larger. It might be 20-25% more. Got it, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Amish Shah, the company secretary, for closing comments. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you joining us today.
If any of your questions remain unanswered, you can get back to the investor relations team and we'll be happy to take those separately. With that, we'll conclude today's call. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. On behalf of Gofix by Science Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.